guys. <clears throat> Got a full day working in on this thing today. Saturday. Um, first day in a long time I've got to work on very much. I'm still doing a few evenings, but sometimes I'm just too tired to fool with it. Uh, let's see, I don't know where we were at last time. We've made a lot of these lines here. These are fuel lines that run up to the injector system here. Runs across. We have the intercooler mounted. Plumbed up from the turbo up. All right, did a little plumbing. On this over this over boost valve for your turbo, this is in the way of your intercooler that sets up here. So you have to take this off and cut an inch and an eighth off, really off of this end, and then you turn it around and put it back on for this application. Uh, I've got the hose drilled for my intercooler it's already been mounted i'm about ready to put it back on there for good after i work the holes over uh, number one heads up uh, the intercooler when you mount the intercooler it says to put it on there and match drill on the three tabs and mount your intercooler and then it tells you to get these hoses out and cut them to fit so, heads up, do not mount the intercooler until you put the hoses on here. If you'll notice how close I am to the engine mount here, I had to remount the intercooler. I had to drill one set of hose farther over this way in the mounting tabs to get this to clear. So, don't drill your hose in there until you mount these hoses and see, because there's not a lot of room for these two inch hoses to go so just a heads up on that when you're mounting your intercooler be careful um fuse box i don't know if it was on there last time i showed you i have finished the gas lines i think i already showed you that but i've got them tied down now just need to trim them up a little bit they're they're really stout i really like that direction for for putting them on I went ahead and mounted the intercooler because as you can see I have a lot of electrical lines and pl other plumbing and you really don't know where to put those where they're good they have to come all the way here's the fuse box half of them goes to the bottom of the fuse box here about the other half uh, goes to the EMC which sets Engine control module sets here, and you have to mount it wherever these will plug into it at. And it says don't mount it until you get the wires on there and see where they'll reach to. So when you start laying your wires, then you think, well, what else goes in here? Well, I've got two radiators that mount down here, water cooler and oil cooler, and I had the air exchanger, inter the intercooler, uh, up here on top. So I thought, well, everything leads to something else. So I thought, I better get my radiators mounted and then see where my wires can run. Because, by the way, when you get to the firewall forward, you will be happy. The firewalls are pre-drilled. Parts just go on. There's no reaming. Uh, you do have to drill. You know, you drill a few holes here and you drill a few passage holes here where the the uh, water heater that the water goes through for your heater those two passes you have to drill them in but the majority of stuff is pre-drilled hose line up stick a rivet or a bolt whatever is supposed to go in there and it all fits the hoses you have to make all your hoses they're not hard there's a website you go to that tells you how to make them so we got those mounted we've got the vacuum system with all the indicators three of them here they're all mounted what else we've got the oil tank put on i think we had the fuel system on last time we finished running uh, lines from the fuel system we ran lines up 
here to the fuel system the return off the injector uh, we run all, put the oil tank on got it mounted uh, we got it plumbed we don't have things tied down or, or tightened up either one those are a bear uh, on the 915 the 912 just has one oil return the 915 has two, so you have a 180 on this side that comes back across. And, of course, it all has to have a double heat shield on it because it's running so close to the exhaust. Uh, this here I'll tie up to the engine somewhere. The other one comes on the back. I'm going to go ahead. I've got to add another piece. I just said to put a 12-inch heat shield on here, but I'm still right here by the exhaust. So I'm gonna go I don't know why I didn't just run the heat shield all the way to start with I did on the second one I uh, got the engine control unit ECU it is mounted now I can start fishing these things around plug ins around to plug into it start getting the plug let's see we got we finished this, this up this morning we got our oil cooler, which is the front one, and our water radiator, which is the back one. We got them finished up. Still got the cardboard on them to protect them. Okay, I'm drilling these. Oh, for drilling. <laughs> I'm bending metal today. I uh, got the water radiator here on bottom. This is the water radiator. This is the oil cooler. They stack them. So you, the book gives you a guesstimate about where to stack, where to bend these at. Uh, this is my top one It gets mounted on here on the top of the radiator Rived it on then you might have to drill holes To mount you're supposed to have it a quarter Somewhere around a quarter not over a quarter inch out. I left the cardboard on there. That's a That's a pretty nice Go by the bottom was a lot lot a lot tighter bend uh, there's the bottom one, and it mounts on here. It'll get riveted on the bottom piece here, and then there again, it'll get matched drilled for a bolt to go through there. That's what holds your oil cooler on there. I'm going to show you how I bent these because I have a bender, but it won't bend this tight. So, first, I took the first one I marked, of course. Drill your mass, drill your hose in two pieces at a time. Then I put it in there like that and bend it. Bend it, of course, to get the first bend, which is very, you have to use a hammer to make a much of a square corner. When you get it bent, we'll take a hammer and beat, beat this line right here, and that all beat out fine. Then I mount it in here like this. I put that piece in there, and of course, this is bent straight towards me, and then I take my chisel and slide down here into this corner and start hammering it as it goes around until I hammered all the way until it's flat against there. That's how you can make a tight bend with if you don't have a good bender. You can get her done with a hammer and chisel. They're ready to mount. Uh, we cannot mount this until we put the cowling on. Once you put the cowling on, you actually set this in the bottom of the cowling I forget, it's three-eighths of an inch. I think you're supposed to shim underneath it. And then then you drill these holes up here, which mount in these holes. So I can't do that until the cowling work's done. I've got a... I'll show you a little bit about making hoses and testing hoses. All right, guys, you got to make a lot of hoses on this job. Make several of these. I'm just going to show you one. Uh, they give you a good website to show you how to do these, so this is just an example. Go check out the website. Uh, first thing, you tape these off and cut them off. Be sure and get your fitting on there first. Now, if you do that, take a, any little thing you've got. Spread the stainless steel. Get all your stainless steel wiring here started out. Now 
It has to be opened up enough that the bevel part of, of this piece will go between uh, the rubber and the stainless. So once you get it started good, get that piece in there and you're, some of them we really have to work, some of them goes right in there. Once you push it in there, you pull it out and you can see, I don't know if you can see in there or not. You can see the black rubber or nylon and it's all the way against the lip, which is just maybe an eighth inch inside of this. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's it's pushed up good. So now that you're in, you put your piece back in. Find your nut that slid all the way down the cable on you. You run it back up. And then see the bottom of this uh, crimps your stainless on the outside of this, and then your inside will crimp as you tighten it up onto the nylon. So you push this up and get it started. Start. There it goes. Once you get it started, I like to put it in the vise. Once you get it in there, always continue to keep pressure on it. This is a uh, AN8 size. That's a 7 8 wrench. And I start tightening that down now. When you get start getting tight on that, it'll start turning on you. And I haven't cut this one to length yet. So you just get a hold of it out here where it can go ahead and turn with it. You feel it start tightening down. And they'll snug right up against themselves. They pretty well run all the way down. Give them a good pull. That's about it. We'll leak check. Check. I'll show you how to leak test them. Uh, you get you a pan of water, big enough for your pot. And I'm just going to check where I put the ends on here. I'm going to try not to get all this wet because you have to put all this on on this particular fitting because it won't go over the fittings. So if you we've got it aired up to 125 pounds, we put it in the water. Look for leaks. I'll roll this fitting on in there if I can. I don't see any air bubbles anywhere. So we're going to call that one good. And that's the test procedure for testing your, like I say, you can buy, you can buy a fancy, a lot better system than this, but it's, uh, it's probably 75 bucks. You can hook the hoses on. This only time you run into problems is if your hose ain't long enough to make a, make both connections. But just buy these little ends here that's got the uh, place for the air valve, the eighth inch pipe thread in the side of them. I have a 10, I have an 8, and I have a 6. I think it's only three size hoses that we'll be using. And you can test all your hoses before you put them on. This is an oil line here. Got oil line, free fuel lines. I don't think the water lines use these high pressure fittings. So These are supposed to be good to 1,000 pounds. There again, uh, follow the directions. Don't follow mine. I'm just giving you a little example. Now this one, after I get done, get it cut to length, you'll get a fire sleeve, which is this, 1200 degree fire sleeve. You slide it on here, before you put your other end on there, by the way. And then it, on top of that, where it goes by the exhaust, which this one does go real close to the headers, well, it will get this, another 1200 degree sleeve. But it'll be doubled up with two 1200 degree, this is a heat shield, this is just I don't know what to call it, just heat, heat wrap. We do have two layers where it runs by the exhaust because it, uh, those turbo exhausts are pretty warm. Okay, once you get her put together, <clears throat> the uh, black underneath covering, it says to put a 
uh, heat shrink tubing over the end of it. So we've got some high temperature heat shrink here. This is one inch. That's what I have. And it uh, works fine. It's a three to, three to one shrink rate on it. That's all there is to it once you get it down there and, and, and set on good. Then I'll put this up here. And I will actually safety wire it. There's a little groove here in that nut. I will put a piece of safety wire around there to hold the outside uh, safety shield on there. There's safety wire. She's ready to mount. As far as that goes. Uh, the last hose that comes out of here runs to the uh, oil radiator that I was just showing you a while ago. So it's not on there. And then this one here is the turbo return line goes in here. And it's not completed yet. So we're getting underneath the hood work about done. I can't do much of the water plumbing until I get that radiator mounted. Cause really, I mean, they're just two hoses uh, I'm assuming this is one of them coming off the tank here it's all got to be and then of course they get plumbed up from here there'll be a T go in there somewhere and go back in here to this fitting that's where the uh, engine or the cabin heat gets its water source from comes in here and then there's another one right there where it goes back out so there'll be a heater sitting in heater core sitting in here with a fan on it i think that's about all we've got done this week i mean it don't look like much but i've been i've been all day making all these lines and hoses and stuff which is really enjoyable i mean i've made hydraulic hoses on the farm this is really the same same system we used to have these ends that you could put on and take off and then the pressures as they get so high that those wouldn't work anymore but they're fine these are already a thousand psi so i mean you know you run 45 pound of fuel pressure and i don't know 70 or 80 pound probably on a cold morning oil pressure i'm just i'm not never had it running so I'd, those, are, those are guesses Well, that's uh, about all I got today. Have a good Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully I'll get some more time out here Monday. The way the weather's looking. Which... See you next time.